I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you some facts about how rainwater manages its systems and its relationships. First of all, Minister Mkunu, I would like to provide South Africans with the assurance that this organization has a long-standing commitment to working cooperatively with all its customers so that us and our customers are able to meet the needs of citizens, the needs of businesses, and all other consumers of water. We have a robust stakeholder engagement strategy, plan, protocols, and practices, which have been fine-tuned fine over time and which continue to be constantly and continuously improved. Communication is a two-way uh, street for it to be effective. And we are open to feedback all the time from our customers because we value the relationships that we have with our customers. The city of Joburg is a case in point where recently Rentwater has been engaging with the mayor and staff of the city of Johannesburg. And these um, engagements have led to further enhancements and agreements about how to relate to each other and how to improve on communication, which is something we value and we, we are implementing. And because we value stakeholder management and communication so much, the Board of Rendwater four years ago included proactive stakeholder engagement and communication as one of the key strategic pillars in our strategy on which we manage the performance of the chief executive. And we provide regular guidance and oversight on the implementation of the strategy. Of course, there is always arguably room for improvement, which is why we're con constantly looking at things again. And also, the environment is not static. The environment changes all the time. And as the environment changes, we respond by making changes. Even now, as I speak, Minister, uh, some members of our team are at the moment at the office of the Executive Mayor of Johannesburg at the first session of the City of Johannesburg Cluster Communication Task Team, which is an indication of the collab collaborative manner in which we work with all our municipal customers. We welcome this from the Mayor of Johannesburg just as we welcome it from all the municipalities we serve. We run a customer satisfaction uh, survey as well in order to judge our performance um, from the point of view of our customers. And those satisfaction surveys, Minister, always come up at the higher 80s and, and 90s. And we monitor the chief executive and the team on the performance on that customer uh, satisfaction survey. More than that, uh, Minister, it's not only in the chief executive scorecard, it's also on the scorecard of the board in the shareholder compact in how you also monitor our performance. Now, this customer satisfaction survey is very evidence-based from a technical interface point of view and is completed by people in municipalities who have the experiential uh, 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 you know, background of how rainwater services and interacts with municipalities. I would just like to highlight a few points before the chief executive gets into the finer detail in relation to the information that was put in the public domain in the last week. To, and I do this in order to help the media and the public understand the landscape and interpret and analyze the information that has been placed in the public domain and as they continue to, to receive it. First of all, Rand Water is a bulk service provider in terms of the Water Services Act established in, in terms of Section 28 of that Act. What that means is that our legislative duty is to abstract, and in simple language, that means we fetch water from the Val River system. We abstract it from there. We purify it, that is, we clean it in order to get it to a standard where it is fit for human consumption. We not only meet national standards, we meet international standards in terms of the health status of the water that we provide. Then we distribute it to our customers. And who are our customers? Our customers are the metros, the municipalities, the local municipalities, large industrial customers, commercial industry, 
and a large proportion of the country's mining sector we pro we, that we provide directly. And we do this based on bulk provision contracts that we enter into with individual customers, not as a group, but individually with each customer so that we can be alive to any factors that are important to that particular customer locally. And those contracts also include communication protocols. They are very clear about things like formal notifications that we must give to our customer should we need to interrupt the service for any reason, as an emergency or for planned maintenance, for instance. That's our contractual obligation. But more than being a contractual obligation, it's also a duty that we have, bearing in mind the criticalness and the value of the uh, you know, resource that we supply, being water, and how important it is to communities and to citizens. In addition, these contracts, in addition to the contracts, we also have a customer charter that also indicates and guides the staff of Rainwater in terms of how to give advance notification in the spirit of mutual cooperation and support so that Rainwater and the municipalities can plan together should there be a need for a planned interruption for maintenance, for instance, in order to minimize the adverse impact that will then follow should uh, an, an area or a community not receive water. But after we have given the notice, as Kamu uh, referred to the notice that had been issued that would have led to plant maintenance happening during this week. Um, after we issue the notice, we continue to assess and monitor and evaluate the situation in order to be sure that we minimize the hardship, that we are technically ready, that the timing is appropriate, and no major maintenance work just happens haphazardly. It happens after communication. So in this particular instance, after we had issued the notice, in collaboration with the municipal customers that would have been affected, we deemed it not an appropriate time and therefore we, we've rescheduled uh, or postponed that maintenance. That is not incompetence. That is, in fact, um, being circumspect about things like reservoir levels, because if you go ahead and do maintenance when a municipality has low reservoir levels, it might mean that the water might run out too quickly and therefore the adverse impact might be more than you would like uh, uh, or, or a desired level. And therefore we do that all the time. It's part of how we do the work. There's nothing sinister in that at all. Um, and it's part of that two-way communication that I speak about, that we, we are open to feedback that we incorporate changes all the time, that we do this collaboratively and with cooperation to each o with each other in order to make sure that the service uh, to consumers and citizens is seamless in the value chain because the value chain is interconnected. What happens on the rainwater system could affect the municipal system and therefore could affect citizens and therefore we try and make it seamless. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, Red Water has without fail always communicated to its customers when it plans maintenance. We would never undertake maintenance of a level or a scale that might impact um, service delivery without preparing the municipalities and without direct communication to the customers that are affected because we are sensitive uh, as well to, to, to the public we also generally issue media statements to make sure that the word is spread far and wide and reaches the public as well. Being a bulk provider, we're not responsible for reticulation. It means we purify the water and get it up to your municipality. The municipality is then responsible for the local distribution and reticulation of water. That is not our space. So as a result, we don't enter into the space of water tankers as a rule in terms of our legal obligations and, and, and responsibilities because that is the area of municipalities. We acknowledge the fact that water tankers are an alternative method of supplying water when water is not coming out of the tap. And because we work collaboratively with our municipalities, we don't just fold our hands and say it's not our legal responsibility. When a municipality says to us, we are struggling, we don't have enough tankers or 
the area is too wide or for, for whatever reason they can't meet their obligations in terms of water tankering, then we do it as assistance to municipalities. It's not our responsibility. Uh, and I think that that needs to be clear that that resides squarely within the responsibilities of a municipality in an affected area where alternative supply needs to be uh, provided. And that is why any planned maintenance work has to have advance notice so that a municipality could prepare itself to be able to make sure that this alternative method of providing water is available. The other point that was put into the public domain is an issue of security at our water purification plants, which are national key po points. I would like to affirm that. They are national key points, and they are with therefore have adequate security. And the fact that they are without adequate security is without um, merit. All our treatment plants are national key points with all the measures that that and the security features that that implies. And um, for security reasons, I cannot detail what those are, but no one can just walk into our water purification plants, Minister. Um, and, and our monitoring and our reporting does not show any breach of such security to have uh, happened in the, uh, uh, at all. The next point was uh, around asbestos pipes. Rainwater does not have as, asbestos pipes, as alleged, that um, best regularly and create water supply interruptions. In fact, if you check, you will find that all the recent interruptions have either had to do with plant maintenance by rainwater or by failure in the energy uh, supply to rainwater facilities that has slowed down the purification and distribution of water. Rainwater does not have a recent case that, um, you know, uh, 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 that relates to rainwater pipes bursting. But I think we are all fully aware and can witness with our eyes wherever we live or work pipe bursts and leaking pipes that happen within the reticulation space quite commonly. Uh, but that clearly has nothing to do with water. I mean, with rainwater, it has to do with the municipalities in different areas where their pipes uh, burst or leak and, are not, and, and for most uh, people's experience are not uh, um, attended to uh, promptly as well. These leaking pipes in the municipal space account for 40% of water losses um, in our country that has been spoken about. Uh, Minister, you spoke about it at the recent water summit as well in relation to the aging infrastructure, the maintenance back backlog in the municipal space. That is not the rainwater space. Um, so I would like to assure you that rainwater works continuously to safeguard the rainwater network and to look after its assets using the best asset management philosophies and strategies. And as a result, we have a capex uh, or capital expenditure program over the next five years that has been costed at 25 billion that is particularly geared towards looking after our infrastructure. And the chief executive will outline some of those plans and will also outline how in 2022, those might result in planned maintenance, uh, 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 you know, programs that might affect our ability to uh, provide water. But this means that we will communicate in time for every instance that will, that will follow. We do this, this is necessary work. And anywhere in the world where anybody operates an asset like this, they would have to do this. There is no other way to, for instance, replace a pipe or link an old pipe to a new pipe in order to extend your network without causing some uh, interruption or to commission a new pump station or anything like that without causing some interruption. We ha and we have to do this work and this investment in order to ensure that we support economic growth, we um, support social development in our country, we upgrade our system, we do preventative ma uh, maintenance, and we ensure that we do operational efficiency all the time in order to take advantage of new technologies, in order to become more energy efficient, and in order to make sure that our system is operated sustainably. And this is informed by knowledge of our asset. 
our teams are continuously engaged in condition assessment that is looking at our infrastructure to look at what needs to be done and then doing those long-term plans that the CE will be sharing with you. So we are quite conscious as Rendwater of our strategic responsibility and the contribution that we make to the country's economic and social landscape. And we are driven by this to do the right things and to do them at the right time and to do them at the right way, especially as regards the infrastructure. I thank you very much. And I would now like to um, invite the Chief Executive, Mr. Sipomsai, to share with you the details of the work that we are undertaking in 2022 and to situate that work within the five-year program that I re referred to, that we are engaged in to look at this um, and to take care of this significant asset base that we ha have the privilege of looking after. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Minister, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the object of my presentation really is to, is to take you through our infrastructure rehabilitation renewal program in the next about 10 minutes. Obviously, it's a summary of um, a very detailed um, plan of action to ensure that we not only operate our infrastructure efficiently and effectively, but maintain it, refurbish it, augment it to ensure continued water supply sustainably going forward. As a bulk water utility, uh, we supply bulk water mainly to municipalities. Um, we're talking here close to about 13 million consumers of, our, of the water that we produce across the length and breadth of our area of operation. Essentially, our area of operation covers the entire Gauteng, but it also expands to um, Pumalanga, parts of Northwest, and, and the Free State. So what we do as rainwater, we get our source, mostly our water from the Valdem. We purify it in Ferenachen through two um, purification works, Ferenachen and Zekerbosch purification pump stations. From there, we pump water all the way up to the reef, where we have booster stations that further pump water all the way to the municipalities. We have four of those booster stations. Um, the Aikenhof one really supplies water to the west part of the um, of our area of operation. This includes the areas of Merafo and, um, and, and parts of Rustenbeck. That will be Aikenhof. Then to the eastern side of our area of operation now that extends all the way to Mpumalanga, we have a Mopleton system um, this system also provides most of its water to Ekurleni and all the eastern part of our area of operation. But centrally, um, in Johannesburg and in Swanee, we have two dedicated large-scale pump stations that, does, that supplies these two major municipalities and our dear customers in Gauteng, that is Swanee and Johannesburg. And these pump stations are your Swarkopis and, um, and the Palmit uh, pump station. So we have four of these pump stations. And from time to time, as we rehabilitate, as we refurbish, as we maintain, these systems are likely to, to be affected. Needless to say, we are going to maintain. Is the right way to do, is the right thing to do in terms of sustainable water supply going forward. Currently, and without fail, on average, we supply about 4,300 million liters of water a day. We peak at approximately 5,000 million liters of water a day. Just to give you an indication of how much this water is, because sometimes these megaliters cannot be contextualized nicely. 5,000 million liters of water, we're talking approximately 2,000 Olympic size swimming pools that we feed with water on a daily basis. 2000. Imagine an Olympic swimming pool. It's about 50 meters long, 25 meters wide, 2 meters deep. It contains 2.5 million liters of water a day that, you, that it can accommodate. 2.5 million liters. We supply 2000 of those long course Olympic size swimming pool um, on average, particularly when we pick. 
we do this through a network of pipe. We have about 3,500 kilometers of pipe network. The biggest is 3.5 meter diameter pipe, huge pipe, that actually demonstrate how big our operations are. We do so through also quite a number of storage dams, which we call reservoirs because they are localized. And um, they average around 300. And we're building, you'll see in the next slides, if you can be able to project it up there, we're building one of the biggest reservoirs in the continent, which is Flakfontein Reservoir, to ensure continued water supply going forward. Um, the, what we're seeing here, if it could be seen from home, um, in my presentation, we're trying to show that we have a network of pipe. It's a spaghetti pipe, and all these pipes, if you think about it and visualize it in the simplest manner, if you're pumping water from the south of Gauteng all the way to the north, most of the pipes will be running horizontal. What we do with all these horizontal pipelines, 3,500 kilometers of, of, of these pipes, big and small, ranging up to 3.5 meter diameter, we make sure that they are also connected. So we have cross connection in all our pipes. What does that do? It gives us flexibility. So if there's one pipe that fails, we are able to supply another pipe. That is why in the history of red water, there's never been a day where we are not able to supply water. We may have reduced provision of water in a system because we are maintaining that system, but because of a network of spaghettis, we'll never have and never had a situation where the whole area of supply of rainwater is without water because in most instances, we ensure that we have this cross connection. So with the maintenance that we, we're planning, we identify all the areas in our area that still need to be connected. So as we lay additional infrastructure and pipes in our system, we also bring in these new pipes to connect with the old systems. And that is where you have disruptions because you cannot do it so with live um, pipes that are having water at high pressures of over, over 30 bars in, in, in our system. It's just not doable. So it is a necessary inconvenience, short-term inconvenience, if you like, but um, for the long-term benefit of ensuring we have water supply going forward. As the chair has indicated, we, we run our assets <coughs> through what you call life cycle, um, uh, or asset life cycle, um, underpinned by a management strategy that gives that effect. It has got three objectives. The first one talks about you have to properly design and lay the infrastructure, but you have to operate it, uh, which is the second objective. The third objective is to then extend it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot run a network as big as this without maintaining it. It's not gonna work. And I'm going to oversimplify it with an example of a car. Most people have got cars. That car at any given time, you have to stop it service it and on that particular day you can't drive that car so essentially with our maintenance plan we're doing exactly that we're taking our pipes out of service because we have to repair them we have to maintain them so our life cycle um, asset management dictates for us to refurbish the pipes to maintain them to replace them to put new ones on board so there's nothing incompetent about that is the way of dealing with the asset is the way of ensuring continued supply going forward. You don't drive your car forever. This system that we operate is a 24-7-365 system. There is no way that you can make certain interventions without interrupting. As it, it has been indicated, we do provide 21-day notice for each and every system that is going to be affected going forward. So what's gonna be happening? We're not gonna stop. We have to maintain the system. Otherwise, the system is going to completely crash on us. In the next few months, leading up to the outer years, what Renault has been doing in the last five, ten years, we've been laying a lot of pipes on the ground to augment the system. So all these pipes need to be connected because they're still asset under construction. We have to derive value out of that. We have to prepare our area of supply for growth. So all these pipes that we're bringing in, we are going to be interconnecting with the old pipes. And that will cause as part of the maintenance plan, disruptions from time to time. We will continuously communicate, but we are not begging off. If you don't maintain your system, if you don't upgrade your infrastructure, if you don't augment your system, 
is going to collapse on you. So we are going to be doing and laying and ensuring that we communicate um, all these maintenance schedules going forward, beginning now and, and, and the rest of the year as we augment our system. In, the, in this current financial year, 2022, we are planning to spend approximately 2.6 billion um, in our infrastructure upgrade, refurbishment, and augmentation. Most of that will go to our pipelines, 3,500 kilometers of, of these pipes. We are going to also be doing various interventions in terms of automation of our sets, electrical, civil infrastructure, mechanical infrastructure, we are going to be looking at our process assets and, and, and IT infrastructure to run our telemetry system. This is what you're going to, to do in the next coming year. In the next five years, we're planning to spend between 25 and 28 billion rands to augment this infrastructure. As we augment the infrastructure, as we lay these pipes, we have to make sure that they are connected to assist us with maintenance going forward. 60% of that will go to our pipelines or pipeline network and this will require of us in certain areas to stop our operations to connect these. We will communicate this in advance because some of them they take time. During the connections or during the maintenance people don't feel the, uh, the disruptions immediately depending on the kind of intervention that you have. Some of them are latent even after you have reconnected them people will still feel low pressures in certain areas, shortages of water. But we would like to, our members of the public and our municipalities to bear with us during this period of time because, as I say, it's part of maintenance. It's not failure. It's maintenance, it's schedule, it's plan, and it also talks to our augmentation infrastructure. And in the shortest possible term, just in terms of what we're doing insofar as our augmentation is concerned, we're currently building an additional system of about 1,200 million liters of water that we bring into the system. We have divided that into A and B. A is bringing 600 million liters of water in the next two years. In this year, we are bringing an additional 150 million liters of water a day into the system. So we'd like to assure you that all your demands in terms of the growth that you are planning for has been accommodated into our renewable augmentation program. As we speak, as I indicated, we are building additional reservoirs, one of them being Flak Fontaine Reservoir. This is going to give us an additional storage capacity of over 200 million liters of water a day. So from the infrastructure, insofar as purification is concerned, we have plans. Insofar as storage is concerned, we have plans. 60% of our budget is going to go into our pipe network. So the entire infrastructure has been planned for for purposes of augmentation and sustainable water supply going forward. What we are proposing at this point in time to our municipalities, and we are working very closely with them, um, we have the established what we call Project 1600. This Project 1600 deals with the issues of ensuring that we save the water that we have so that we meet the future requirements going forward. At this point in time, we are abstracting beyond our license. Why we are starting beyond our license? Because our usage is more than what the catchment can give. What is the easiest and the quickest way of winning? The solution is not building dams all over Lesotho when we are losing about 40% of the water that we have. The reconciliation study that has been conducted by the department together with our municipalities indicates that if we save only 1,600 megaliters, million me uh, cubic meters, um, of water that comes into the system, we will be able to meet the demand. Yes, we will augment. Yes, there are plans afoot to augment, but there's no point and it doesn't make sense for us to build big dams for us to lose the very same clean water that you have just purified. So we want to encourage our municipalities and the viewers at home to use water sparingly to fix the leaks where they're happening because in the long run it will ensure that we have the water that we need in the catchment, but it saves us an obscene amount of money from building the infrastructure point of view. But from where we're sitting as a we continuously work with our municipalities, receive their demands, continuously maintain, upgrade, and refurbish our infrastructure through our life cycle asset management strategy. Thank you.
Thank you very much to the Chairperson of the Randwater Board as well as the Chief Executive of Randwater. Ladies and gentlemen, at this moment I would like to call upon the Minister of Water and Sanitation, Mr. Sensum Kunu, to come and address us. Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Kamo. Uh, let me greet the Chair of Rendwater. Uh, and thank you very much for addressing uh, the public in the manner that you have done. Very clear. Uh, you were steady and uh, very much to the point. And let me also thank the CE for his part in terms of details, very clear details, not boring, straight to the point, and we hope that their messages constituting one overall message from Randall Water as an entity uh, to um, uh, constituting that one message uh, to the public in Gauteng, and that uh, they would have found this communication very important and very useful, far more than uh, the statement that uh, in part has uh, make, made us feel that we, ne we need to come here, a statement associated with uh, one fellow uh, called uh, Solim Simang of uh, the DA. But firstly, let me um, um, welcome uh, the fact that we are now at the end of uh, the water month and uh, the water month is there to sensitize us every year about the importance of water not only as a country not only as a municipality but as a world you would have noticed and uh, have become aware that Senegal uh, was the host of this year's um, World Water Month, uh, the for, uh, well, uh, where they hosted the forum uh, that was dealing with uh, what at the world level. And uh, uh, it, 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 it was a, a huge success for, uh, for the continent, for them as a country and for all of us. And we thank them for hosting uh, such an important event in their country. Um, we ourselves uh, uh, pick up uh, from uh, this water month uh, and uh, um, become much more active uh, than we would have, we would have uh, done before, uh, picking up on new developments, taking up new issues and challenges uh, all the time, uh, and uh, of course, make new, uh, um, express new determination uh, to address the issues of water. And so while we um, are closing uh, or drawing to a close of the water month, we also welcome the ushering in of a new commitment as taken from the platform that the water month would have provided. Firstly, let me remind uh, uh, everybody in the country once more that we are a water scarce country and parts of the country are prone to drought uh, and, and other parts of this country are affected uh, more uh, by climate change than the, than the others. But uh, having done so, uh, it is therefore to emphasize the need for every individual citizen to, to use water sparingly, literally take our message positively literally take our message as a serious message. We are a water scarce country and water needs to be used sparingly. We are pleading with everybody out there. In the men who are here, having listened to the chair and uh, the CE of Rendwater, one, to support them on the way they are doing their job in Gauteng and elsewhere. We felt that uh, they may be falling into political abuse by the DA without any single iota of evidence to put forward. 
and as a reason to call them incompetent. Now, we, we want to support everything that they've explained here and the way in which they do their job. It was not long enough. It was not long ago when uh, we came here with them as well, when they were fixing uh, uh, some of uh, their operations in the Val, and they saw the need uh, uh, together with us to come here to explain how that uh, fixing would, would uh, um, affect supply, ordinary su supply. And that operation went exactly the way they had explained uh, to the public in terms of days and even hours. Now, just referring to that alone, I don't know where in the world you would call that in, in, in you would call that incompetence. When a person who is an authority on water say to the to the consumers and the public and citizens of the country, may may I please have your ear? I have to do some maintenance or some replacement of a pipe that would narrowly supply water to you. It will take this number of days, it will take this number of hours, and will keep you informed. And that happens exactly. And then at the end of the day, you say uh, there are, such people are incompetent. Now that's abuse, and that's wrong. Not only are we here to support them, but we are here to encourage them to stick to the way they do things both in terms of communication. Now, the chair has explained fully here that they had a meeting with the uh, local municipalities of Gauteng to explain what was uh, going to happen in terms of planned maintenance. Now, we are from the summit of 18th and 19th as the, uh, in uh, February, uh, together with them uh, in Kalaka Estates, February of this month, of this year. That summit, for all two days, and even after, there was a lot of emphasis on the need to maintain, operate and maintain your infrastructure. This was a message to us, it was a message to municipalities. And in any case, we have been interacting with all municipalities in the country last year and early this year, all of them, without any exception, were putting this as a very, very huge challenge, maintenance of uh, um, infrastructure, complaining that uh, their infrastructure is old, that it is dysfunctional, that by and large leaks water, causing um, that expense of leaked water to be passed on to the citizens, which then create uh, more expenses for the citizens. Now here is a port that takes that message, of course not for the first time, but boosted even by that, and reminded by that, and even conscientized by that. Say, we have budgeted 25 billion or so, and we are on to a very tight and deliberately designed program of maintenance. And then they are called incompetent. Then they are called incompetent. And this is wrong. I always know that DA is very desperate uh, to be seen, to be uh, communicating with the uh, people and thinking that in every aspect they are better than government. I didn't know that they've descended to this level because this is outright lying, lying to the public. I'm made to believe that they are, they are calling for a, uh, um, um, they say they, there must be a, a campaign, there must be a march um, on, uh, on, uh, on rent water. Uh, and they must demand tanks. And I read their message here 
that uh, uh, rainwater is is supposed is supposedly uh, or is supposed to be um, availing tanks uh, to the public, and it is not even said when. It is not is said where, for what what for, for what good reason. But uh, people are being invited to a platform where they uh, campaign against uh, against rainwater. So I here to support them. They are not incompetent. They are competent. And they are efficient. Of course, that does not mean that we, we don't experience outages of water for whatever reason, burst pipe or maintenance as we are talking. But by and large, uh, I must remind uh, uh, um, Simang and the DA that in most cases, even here in Gauteng, water outages are not as a result of the service that rent water has to render in terms of bulk water. It is more localized. It is more in relation to local municipalities. It is more to do with uh, whatever would have uh, lacked on the side of municipalities, particularly here in Gauta, here, here in uh, Tswane. The problems that are being experienced on an ongoing basis in Tswane, Hamaskral, and everywhere else has nothing to do with rainwater in the main. It has more to do with uh, Tswane as a local municipality. The tanks or the tankers that are supposed to be the basis for a campaign against rainwater have nothing to do with rainwater. They have everything to do when necessary with uh, local municipalities. So we are here to make it clear that from where we sit, rainwater is uh, competent. They are, they are doing everything that any other human being in their, in their shoes can do or, or company can do. And we are here to encourage them and to support them to higher heights of uh, efficiency. I may as well take this opportunity also to commend and support Kabeha as a municipality working with uh, Amatola Water in the Eastern Cape for the completion of Noit uh, Khedacht dam, uh, no, uh, water scheme that is going to add uh, 70 megalitres to the system of that city. For the last seven years, there has been no rain there, pure drought, causing water levels in their dams to get down to no more than 15%. A very dire situation for Kabecha and the citizens in that area. Now, we were there some four weeks, three weeks ago. We went to the site where uh, the finalization of uh, North Gedacht is being done. And we are happy to say that uh, uh, the uh, constructors that are involved there under the implementing agent, uh, Amatola Water Board, they are on time. And we are expecting that we will get the first drop of uh, from the North Gedacht pipeline in the next few days, but precisely at the end of the month, probably by Thursday. Now, they issued a notice as well uh, to say today they are pleading with the community to be aware and they are letting them aware and they are sensitizing them that there's going to be disturbance while they connect uh, the pipe, which is phase three, uh, to the system of Kabecha, uh, which will augment water there, which they need uh, very much, and therefore to ask the public to bear with us uh, in that regard. Indeed, we are doing so, supporting Kabecha in that uh, communication that they have done. Similarly, we are supporting also the communication that Rendwater issued to the people of Gauteng as a result of what they were doing. And uh, the statement of the DA even calls it planned um, uh, maintenance, although I think, I say, I think they, they called it planned disruptions. I've never seen something called planned disruption. This is planned maintenance, for, for, for God's sake. Planned maintenance, which is necessary, which is important. 
which guarantees flawless supply or continuous supply to the people, as he says. It guarantees the people of Gauteng long-term benefits in terms of undisturbed supply of water. But there's nothing that you, that you can do when you want uh, to do such plant maintenance. If you ask me what day in a week that is better than any other day to, to do such maintenance, you ask me what time, I would really say the best time to do maintenance in terms of the month, week, and day, and even hour, is exactly when you have to do maintenance. When the bell rings for you to do maintenance of a pi particular pipe, do it exactly on that time. Now, to call that, to call that the way that it is, is really uh, descending to a new law, and I suppose that, understandably, because they are desperate, desperate for votes, desperate to look good, desperate uh, to be, uh, I mean, I think solely himself, who is no longer a mayor and had no way to know that uh, rainwater actually sat with the mayors of this, of, of, uh, of Gauteng and reasoned with them and even saw the need to postpone what they had planned originally just to allow the system to pick up in the local um, uh, local uh, uh, reservoirs so that when maintenance gets done and a shutdown of water temporarily comes in, people continue to have water from the remainder of uh, reservoirs. And therefore, we are pleading with the public not to be confused, uh, but to stick with the messages that come from rent water. And, uh, 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 Solim Simang to desist from using using water to make himself uh, popular, if if that is his intention. And by the way, we shouldn't necessarily politicize water. It's a service, and it's a very very sensitive service. You see, I make an example, not encouraging a, a situation where there are potholes on the roads in our municipalities and anywhere. But at least if there's a pothole on the road, you're able to drive around the pothole and get home still. But uh, there's no way you can get around the situation where there's no, wet, there's no water in your home. You can't drive around that. You just have to have water to, to, to wash yourself, your clothing and other households' needs. There's no way to circumvent it. That is why water is so sensitive. That is why water is so important. That is why it is a right in terms of the Constitution. And that is why we say in our mantra, water is life. And that is why we become so sensitive when there is a, a, a disturbance of water. Last Friday, we were in East London. We even went to the extent of meeting people uh, outside the uh, 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 I mean, outside uh, the city centre, we met business, we met uh, uh, government of the Eastern Cape, we, just to communicate what uh, happened between the 9th and the 15th of March, when water got disrupted there as a result of an unprotected strike uh, by, by workers of uh, um, Amatola Water. We resolved that matter between ourselves and them and the, and the board and the entity. But we went on to explain an account uh, to people there, to relevant authorities, why it happened and, and, and how it came about and what we did during the period. And that was resolved, but still felt we needed to apologize for that disruption of water services or water supply to people. But to also tell them or say to them, the matter is resolved. So here, there isn't even no disturbance at the moment because uh, the, the plant maintenance has been postponed and then they are called uh, inefficient after meeting water or relevant water authorities and agree with them what it needs to be done. So please, um, they, they, we are not saying that uh, citizens of this country and political parties must not talk about water. They are very much welcome to do so, but in a constructive way, in a con not to stoop very low and say things that are outright lies 
causing anxiety among people unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. It is wrong. And let's not be opportunistic, uh, opportunistic people. Uh, let's not be opportunis opportunic, uh, opportunistic um, uh, politicians if we are. Let us uh, be principled. When they do something that, that uh, uh, elicits, el el will, would have elicited criticism, we're fine with that. We're fine with it. But uh, to just say when, you deal, when, when the entity is dealing with planned maintenance, which is so necessary, then they are, they are called uh, inefficient. They are called uh, all sorts of uh, things. It's to confuse the public, and we can't accept that. We won't accept that. And we won't accept people using lies, a manga, plain a manga, uh, to confuse the public using water as a platform. We don't agree with that. It's not going to happen. And we must stop it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we are going to take questions. I would just like to see by a show of hands if we do have any questions. And if we do, may I just ask that you introduce yourself, state your name as well as the media house that you represent. I will see by a show of hands if we do have any questions. Okay. In the absence of any questions, I would like to thank the Minister of Water and Sanitation, Mr. Senzo Mkunu, as well as the chairperson of the Randwater Board, Advocate Hashate, and the CEO of Randwater, Mr. Masai. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you as well for your attendance. Thank you very much for honoring our invite. Thank you. Thank you. Don't come here and say uh, there's a question. <laughs> Have you guys set up? Or are you still going to set up? Please tell that the Please tell that the Rata. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been advised that there are some refreshments that have been prepared by the department. I will just ask. I will just ask Ndate Ratawu to lead us to where the, the venue is. <laughs> I may as well uh, support someone and say, this is, this is planned uh, refreshment. <laughs>